Hello and welcome to Community Unitarian Universalist Church of Plano online. My name is Jeanette Bailey and I am one of the worship associates here at the church. At Community UU, we work for justice, nourish spirits, and transform lives. Today's service is titled Social Gospel, Heaven on Earth. Favorite guest speaker, Kaya Hartwood, will lead us on an exploration of the social gospel movement as a meaningful aspect of the history of progressivism. And social gospel beliefs are alive and well today. Kaya Hartwood holds a Master's of Divinity from the Star King School for the Ministry and is a UU ministerial candidate. Kaya has a long career as a musician, speaker, and creator of good in the world. She is based in Austin, Texas with her wife, Meg Barnhouse, where she serves as the artistic director for the People's Orchestra of Austin. Please get comfortable and enjoy the music and the message for today. Let every moment be a prayer. With every sip of tea, let your lips move in thanksgiving. Be fully present to every stroke of the hairbrush, every cup of milk you pour for the children. Be present without judgment or regret, without plans or expectations or even dreams. And every moment becomes a prayer. As the first hint of green begins to peek through the barren ground, as that little sprig grows into a healthy stem, as that stem grows into a stalk and forms a bud, and as that bud slowly opens with each new day to form a yellow daffodil, let us be like that first hint of green, renewed by the warmth of the sun's rays, and ready to emerge with new energy, ready to face the day. We light this chalice to bring a glimmer of that warmth into our space.
Unitarian Universalism is a covenantal denomination. We hold that we do not have to believe alike in order to love alike. In this and every UU community, there is a diversity of personal creeds. But there is one covenant for our church, and each time we gather, we recite it again. Please join with me now. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom, and to help one another. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned we can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us and eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength. That joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter. A circle of healing, a circle of friends. Someplace where we can be free. Breathe out, I 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 breathe
feet tall, gray hair and eyes and Irish blue. And she buried her husband, four little ones, now the union was all she knew. And she'd stand up to any company gun, if there was a fight, she was home. And the breaker boys and the silk mill girls call her Mother Jones. Well, J.P. Morgan on the drip mouth mine, he paid a dollar thirty-five a day. Twelve to fourteen hours, six days a week. Yeah, that was a company way. But anthracite coal is a hard, hard coal. It burns so clean and true. And it burns out the dreams of a minor soul in the blood of a UNW. Life's been saved by a dish pan game. And those strikers held out for long months. Hard bread and coffee every day. Between the scabs and the guns and the pink or her tons, their courage was slipping away. It's coming up. So the union called in Mother Jones. She said, will you be slaves or be men? Yes. And she told all the women, meet up at dawn and they'll go to that lion's den. So the women marched to that drip mouth line with their dish pans, mops, and brooms. And the sheriff said, now, you go back home. I'm afraid you'll upset the mules. But an angry woman knocked that sheriff down. She said, to hell with the mules and with you. And they chased those scabs all the way back to town. And that strike was almost through. Oh, mother cried out, shame, shame, shame. With their babies in their arms. And the union won. We are no straight and not a soul is harmed. That mother traveled another 30 years. Where there was a fight, she was home. And the breaker boys and the silk mill girls called her Mother Joan. What do Dr. King and the Beloved Community Movement, the Poor People's Campaign, Black Lives Matter, what do all these people have in common? Our, our climate change activism that's beginning and has been going on since the 70s, their common roots go back to a movement that happened after the Civil War and up to basically the 1920s called the Social Gospel Movement. So this morning I'm going to just talk to you about that a little bit and where it comes from and how it's manifesting in the present day as well as some of the major players you might want to check out from the past. A lot of really great things come from this movement. The easiest way to explain what social gospel comes from is to think about Jesus and his ministry when he was alive. So there was a famous minister, a congregationalist minister, so a cousin to Unitarians. We have the same roots. Dr. Charles Monroe Sheldon, he lived from 1857 to 1946, and he wrote a book called In His Steps, What Would Jesus Do? So he is the originator of that term, so he would tell stories to his congregation, 
and then ask them what Jesus would do in that situation. So imagine that you're a Protestant minister after the Civil War, and you have all these people coming from Europe. They're mostly rural-based people, and they're moving into the cities. We have industrialization. We have sanitation problems. Their living conditions are pretty awful. What needs to happen? Well, many ministers thought they should take, when you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the part they concentrated on. And they thought that evangelical was fine and just worrying about your own salvation was fine and part of it, but without any kind of social action that perhaps the kingdom of God would not come because we need to make the kingdom on earth more like the kingdom of God. So more like the heaven that we all envision. And that is the basic premise under social gospel. So the Protestant ministers who got attracted to this movement, they really believe that they should act more like Jesus in the present, in the everyday. So this is the era of the robber barons. You know, the railroads are really coming on, just the very beginning of cars in the early 20th century. All these things are happening before World War I. And there's still a belief in that progress is progressive and that the world is getting better. This changes somewhat after the despair of watching two world wars. But before World War I, before women had the right to vote, there was a sense that peace and temperance, getting rid of alcohol dependency was going to help society as a whole. And, co and concentrating on the problems of society was going to help bring heaven on earth. There was definitely a belief in social Darwinism. In other words, we think that we are more evolved if we come from money and Western civilization and culture. God likes us better. We, uh, we are higher on the food chain because of social Darwinism, the survival of the fittest, where the people who went more toward the social gospel end were much more uh, about cooperation. And we all get, by helping everyone do better, we all do better. And so that's the struggle going on. And it's basically still going on. Ministers really want to be more like Jesus and concentrate on helping the poor and doing good works. And that this was really important. And universalists were also in this camp. In fact, after the Civil War, you have a lot of activity in the universalism toward women as ministers, uh, women's suffrage, also doing good works in the community. And these, this was often led by women. You have a lot of people like Julia Ward Howe, and they're trying to uh, tie women's rights with abolition, with taking care of immigrant people, helping them uh, get adjusted and live in urban society, being concerned about health and being concerned about everyone having equal rights and an equal say in the universe. A lot of the problems that are still going on right now can be addressed and are often addressed with a social justice kind of perspective. In, the, in this day of climate change and dealing with immigration, even, even as something as uh, close to the bone as COVID and how we respond to it, the idea that some people are safer than others, the idea that some people deserve to be treated better than others, this is a problem that kind of comes from uh, our internalized white supremacy kind of built into the structure of the United States. And Protestantism had this war going on as well. Later, you have the Catholic workers, people like Dorothy Day, and that moves into liberation theology, which in South America is so important, the mixture of more Marxist and more socialist ideas with the Christian charity and the concepts of behaving more like Jesus, especially to the poor. And, and So some of the major players are Dr. Washington Gladden, 1836 to 1918. He was a congregational minister. 
and uh, he was very involved in the progressive movement. Washington Gladden was very involved in creating the NAACP. Josiah Strong, who lived from 1847 to 1916, he was a Protestant clergyman who was a strong supporter of American imperialism. And perhaps the most influential social gospel minister, Walter Rauschenbusch, who lived 1861 to 1918. He was a Baptist minister and a seminary teacher and a theologian. He wrote several influential books, among them Christianity and the Social Crisis. He was very involved and he started out his ministry in Hell's Kitchen in New York. He was a very big influence on Martin Luther King Jr. He also wrote a book called A Theology of Social Gospel. And they were just trying to even the playing field and, and be much more concerned about the poor and needy and speak up for them. It's also a battle for democracy. We're basically having this battle right now. So the progressive movement believed that human greed had taken over and they needed to work to cure many of the social and political ills in America. So there's this crossing over of political and social activity. This is the beginning of the whole school of sociology. The social ills that social gospel addressed included poverty and crime, racial inequity, alcoholism, drug addiction, unemployment, civil rights, voting rights, pollution, child labor. People were fighting just to get children not to have to work and for there to be an eight hour workday and a weekend. These are the major issues, crazy issues that social gospel people were fighting for. Gun control, political corruption, the threat of war. But it's also complicated because in the 1920s with D.W. Griffith's uh, Birth of the Nation, suddenly the Ku Klux Klan is gaining members. So there's this inherent conflict going on Two different movements happen that, that you should know that come right out of social gospel. One of them is the Settlement House and people like Jane Addams. Jane Addams started Hull House. She's in the first generation of women to go to college and she's middle class, kind of upper middle class. And instead of doing charity, like many of her uh, grandmothers and her mother's generation would have engaged in, they actually lived with the people they were working with, neighboring them. Now, Methodists had something like this. John Wesley had what they called the social holiness movement, and there are remnants of that in the social gospel movement. But you really see people like Jane Addams taking on the problems of the day and doing it in a way that empowers the people that they're helping and living with them and not dictating to them. This is also the period of the YMCA and the YWCA beginning right out of the social justice movement. Many of the movements that happened later in the 60s, 70s, uh, even up to now and Black Lives Matter are extremely influenced by this period. Uh, Dan McCannon, who's a, a UU historian, talk about how Christianity really needs to integrate the two sides of its personality, the social gospel side and the evangelical save your soul side, and that you need both to have a healthy Christianity. So Dan McCannon says, without the personal, a life of faith and commitment to social justice is very difficult to sustain, as some streams of the social gospel eventually demonstrate it. And without the social, a personal gospel becomes completely private and loses its integrity, as modern evangelism is too often shown. So that pretty much cuts it down to, in a nutshell. In universalism, the idea that we must love our neighbors as ourselves is really at the bottom of, of the concept of universalist social gospel and that by loving our neighbors in the world, we are, do, we are doing the right thing. We are being the hands of Jesus. I do not think we would have had the New Deal and all the social programs that went on in the 40s and the civil rights legislation and the change of war on poverty and the changes that happened in the 70s, protecting the earth, the invention of the EPA and Earth Day, 
All these things would not have happened without the social gospel movement. But I think in, the, in lieu of climate change and how much we need to do to protect the world for our children and our grandchildren, maybe social gospel is another place to visit. It'll be interesting to see how these ideas are incorporated in our future. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this. Our Unitarian Sophia Lyons Foss says life becomes religious whenever we make it so. Amen. This beloved community is a living thing, and we bring much to it by our presence, our love, our caring, our generosity, and our hard work. We may be fed by it in equal or even larger measure. In these uncertain times, we encourage you to give as you are able so that the good works of our church may continue. We also remind you that the Share the Plate beneficiary for the month of May is U Bar U, the Unitarian Universalist Camp and Retreat Center in the Texas Hill Country. 
UBAR U serves UU congregations as well as other groups consistent with their mission for religious retreats and educational programs. So how can you make your donation? Well, you can send a check to the church building address, which you find on the front page of our website. Or you can also donate by visiting our website and clicking on the blue Donate Now button on the front page. And then you can donate online. On behalf of our community, your generosity is deeply appreciated. Remember the way of the wind and breathe and blow. Remember the way of the fire, sparkle and glitter and glow. Remember the way of the water and ebb and flow. Remember the way of the earth and grow. Go in peace.